Hey there, I'm David. He's thrilled to be here. This is What the Print. So Thrall over here is an orc from World of Warcraft and Warcraft. It was asked for by user Lightprin on the Tracer video. I looked on Thingiverse and found this model by a user by the name of Ramstock. Really cool model and one of the coolest things about it is that the joints articulate. So it was a multi-part print. I think there's seven or eight parts in total. And you basically print them in pieces, hook them all up together, and then you get this. Super cool little model. This print is the hardest print I've done so far. A lot of things went wrong. So it all started on Monday, where I got a message from my neighbor. Basically, she could hear the printer overnight from the room directly below the printer room, which is unfortunate because it was her bedroom. So I can completely understand and immediately started looking for solutions. I found a set of dampeners which you can install on the printer on Amazon. I'll post a link in the description, but basically this is what they look like. And that set, I ordered on Tuesday morning, and they arrived on Thursday quite late at night. So what that meant is that the original print I had planned, which was going to be a bunch of big overnight pieces, unfortunately I couldn't do. That is a consequence when you want to print something really large and you have a full-time day job. It takes time and you have to do it while you're at home, so unfortunate. But after I installed these, when I got home from work on Friday, I set to printing and basically ended up printing almost 24 hours a day since then. And I really needed it to get this guy out because all the pieces and the extra difficulty that came with the last few pieces really almost broke it. Like, I almost didn't make this. I normally wrap up recording on Saturday or maybe Sunday morning. It's now Sunday evening. I'm way into time on this one. So, you know, nearly didn't make it, but I'm so glad I did. Because this last piece, yeah, it, it, it hurt. It hurt a lot. So yeah, in total, this took more than 20 hours of printing. Um, I know it's such a small model, you would not have expected that. Probably, I, I don't know the exact numbers because there were so many failed prints. I'm guessing I probably spent between 26 and 30 hours with something on the printer for this model, which really hurts given that I could only start again on Friday night and the, the only piece that it actually printed before that was the torso piece. So most of the work still had to be done. It also needed two re-slices, especially for the legs here, which I'll get back to in a minute, but they were really difficult to get right. Unfortunately, a lot of things went wrong with them. They wouldn't stick properly. I don't know if it's the heat here because, as you probably know, Europe is going through a stupid heat wave at the moment. I mean, it's been like, we broke records in the Netherlands here at 40 degrees two days back to back. We're all dying here, and I think that had something to do with it, but who knows. Um, anyway, I had to re-slice the legs twice uh, and split up some models. Initially tried a setting called uh, one at a time in Cura, where you print one model at a time but lay out multiple on the bed. There are some issues there with height variation. Um, managed to get a couple of them in a one at a time print, but the prints failed horribly. So ended up having to print most of them one by one. There was one which still worked in a one at a time uh, print, but for the most part it was a bit of a struggle. So, as I mentioned, this model is articulated, right? So there's a couple joints that move. Um, basically just these two arms. The hammer is actually separate. You can take it out if you really want. It's a little bit tight, so I'd rather not. Um, but pretty much there was a bit of work getting this to work. Um, and what it came down to is that there's, there's a couple little pegs inside these arms which had to be printed as well. And there's a hole in both the torso and the arm. And the peg you have to put in between. What the peg looks like is a sort of one of those Lego Techniques uh, joiner pieces. It's got 
two little gaps in, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, I call them like uh, compression gaps. And that sort of allows you to snap something on and for it to hold in place. So printing that was a little bit of a challenge. They mostly worked. I had a couple failures where because it was so small, um, the print had knocked it over or something like that. But thankfully these are tiny prints, so it was about a five minute reprint. Um, but eventually got the pegs right and fitting them in the hole was not much of an issue. And um, there were a little bit of cleanup was required, but I basically took this little pointy tool that I have, scratched things out, pulled it out, and then everything managed to fit okay. That made me quite happy. Um, articulated, this is one of my first articulated prints. I've made a few little gear bearing things, but it's not quite like this. And um, this actually, you want really smooth, clear movement, which is very much in line with what this model does. So the PLA used here was the transparent green PLA from Colorfab. Um, these guys, as I mentioned before last week, I did the Kirby in their fluorescent pink, really like the quality of their PLA. This one came in this beautiful sample spool of transparent green. I decided I was going to print Thrall in this because he's green and an orc and that works. What I do like about this filament, when you get the settings right, is the translucency. I mean, there's you can very clearly see there's a little bit of translucency, a little bit of glow, definitely emits some light. I really like the look of the filament. I didn't have any issues printing with it. The only issue I did have was it sticking to the bed, and as I said, I think that had something to do with the humidity here. Uh, in general, beautiful filament, would definitely buy it again maybe in a different color this time. I still have the the translucent pink uh, sample, which I want to try out. Gonna think of something to do with that. But yeah, so far, color fab, really love their filament, definitely gonna buy it again. I printed this at a 0.04 millimeter layer height. Now, that sounds extreme, and it is. The intention was to print as small an orc as possible. Now, given that this is articulated and has moving parts, but also has facial detail, I sort of decided, like, initially scale it down to 10% of the original model. I printed that and got this miniature bust with a head on it that you could not see any detail. It was really bad, like the head was about 3 millimeters high or less. Couldn't do anything with it, which was very unfortunate. So I decided, okay, I'm going to settle for 30%, so I at least get some detail. But I decided to keep the 0.4 millimeter layer height. Because what you notice is the quality of the print is ridiculous. Like, you can barely see the layer lines on this thing. They are smooth, almost end to end. It makes me very happy to see a print this high quality. And I'm actually tempted to reprint my Brigades from Overwatch in this fine detail. I'm very, very hopeful that it won't take 48 hours or something because, you know, obviously at that print level it's a lot slower. But it's beautiful. Like, really high, high quality. I can highly recommend if you're doing some fine work, scale it down to that much. Make sure to look up the magic numbers of your printer. So I have a Creality machine. They use a 0.04 step height. So 0.04 is perfect for this. Very, very pleased with how this result turned out. All right, so let's talk about these pieces. Um, so here's the thing with this model, right? I initially started by printing it in 100% info. That's this torso piece. The quality of it looks fantastic. I'm really happy with it. But as you can see, it's darker than the rest of the model. Unfortunately, it looks like with this transparent PLA, when you do 100% infill, you see a lot more infill, obviously, and that gets a lot darker, especially with the shade of green. So what I did for the rest of the model was I scaled it right down to the opposite end for 10% infill. I actually really like how it turned out. I think it gives just the right amount of transparency without throwing away uh, any detail. I also did add an extra wall layer just so that you know you don't see where the walls connect to the model. 
made me quite happy to do that because yeah, there's not much in the way of these these hard lines where a wall connects to the model. So of the seven pieces, only the torso was done in a hundred percent infill. Everything else, I stuck to the minimum infill area, but you you don't see it. It actually only hits certain points like around behind the knee, um, and that's not really visible. In terms of the, the settings on all of them, I tried to use tree supports as much as I could, because, you know, I love tree supports. But what ended up happening were the tree supports were fine for the arms, and while well, the hammer didn't really need any supports, but this bottom bit, the legs, this was a serious problem for me. Everything that could go wrong on this bottom bit went wrong. And so initially trying with tree supports, it failed I think four times where at some point in the print the head would knock something over and carry the whole print with it. Which did not make me very happy obviously. Now maybe because of the temperature I needed a bit better cooling that could have probably helped a bit, um, but at the same time I switched to a much more aggressive support structure and decided to use a brim plate adhesion helper so that is where it prints up to the base that it's printing around, so in this case the feet um, and actually that helped. It finally it finished printing this afternoon um, managed to get it off the printer and take off the supports without too much effort. The supports were, I mean, they were always with zigzag supports, they were a bit trickier to pull off than the tree supports, but it worked and finally got the legs together. I was really worried about this one because I'm nearly out of filament. So my little sample spool was coming to an end and I was concerned that I wasn't actually going to make it. I probably have maybe another set of legs in this bowl left. Not much more than that. It's very, very little. So I'm super glad that this finished up when it did. It saved me having to order another full spool of this filament without experimenting with the other colors just to finish a single print. I did a little bit of post-processing on this, not very much. Um, and you can probably see it's not the cleanest model. Uh, so. Although I still like the quality because of the layer lines, the amounts of support added a lot of little white break-off points and I had to do a bit of post-processing to just clean things up, um, which unfortunately dulled the finish and I lost a bit of the, the beautiful quality of this PLA. So what I did in terms of post-processing was I used a, a steel brush to brush off the pieces and that helps to break off quite a lot of the the chunkier little bumps and stuff left by the support material and whatever strings you might still have. And then I used a hairdryer and, and this was probably one of the first times I've actually had to use it because this model was particularly stringy and particularly fussy and probably again because of the temperature. But it, um, yeah, it, it, it left a lot of little bumps and details and, and, and strings and stuff like that. So the hairdryer, it helped to melt everything away and put back a bit of that glossy finish. So a lot of the stuff I did with the steel brush, I sort of sprayed over with the hairdryer and it cleaned it up a little bit. That helped quite a bit. Um, I do highly recommend doing it, but I do recommend being very careful when you do. Because as I was doing it, well, I noticed a couple of little things. Um, one of them was I nearly broke the hammer. Because obviously PLA is still plastic, this is not heat treated. So the moment it gets warm, it starts to melt. And as you can see, the hammer has quite a thin connection point. So that got a little bit wobbly. And at some point I actually saw it bend. I stopped the hairdryer immediately, bent it back up and put it back in place and let it cool a little bit. And thankfully it, it survived, but I almost had to reprint this hammer. The other thing that it caused was a little bit of bubbling on the feet. Now this I found kind of interesting and I'm guessing it has to do with the air pockets inside that as you heat it up they expand as well and I feel like I need to sand it down a little bit more so that it stands a little bit flat because yeah it's it's kind of bumpy. 
So if I were to redo this one, what would I do differently? Well, I'd probably start with a hammer. And this hammer came in two different pieces. And although that would work fine if it was an opaque model and I was painting and priming it, uh, unfortunately with this transparent PLA, what that meant is that you've got this harsh line in the middle of the hammer where I had to glue the pieces together. That kind of sucks for, for a model that you're trying to make look really cool and transparent. And it's, it's just because of the filament I was using, but still, I would definitely merge these two and find a way to print it with supports instead of doing this. Next, I would probably not use the steel brush to clean it up. Um, it helped to clean up some stuff, but the hairdryer probably did more good things than the steel brush. And I probably would have just spent more time doing things manually and picking off the little bits and pieces than roughly brushing it. Because that did, unfortunately, create more stuff to clean up, especially with the hairdryer, and didn't actually end up as well as I had hoped. So that's why the quality also looks a little bit rough. I was a bit rough on the steel brush, also in a bit of a rush. Um, but yeah, I probably would have done it a bit differently and left out that step. I definitely would not have done the torso with 100% infill if I do this again. In fact, I might just reprint the torso at 10% infill just to keep it consistent with the rest of the model. I'll have to see. But yeah, that was one thing that I really didn't like in this model. And I would also be more careful with the hairdryer. I mean, I almost overheated it. The feet started to bubble. It doesn't quite stand straight anymore. So, I mean, it's not something I can't fix, but just be careful with the hairdryer. I will definitely do that next time. Another thing which I am considering is getting a bit more cooling in this room, maybe a ventilator, something to, to keep it a bit drier, keep it a bit more cool. I mean, we don't have that much summer here in Europe, but in general, like, this part of the year can get a little bit unbear unbearable. And yeah, if it heats up this much, I don't know what that's going to do to my prints. Like, it's, it's tough enough for me and my wife and the cats to stay cool, but when this thing is churning out 200 degrees behind me, yeah, it gets a little bit hot and that can cause some other issues. So that's probably a good idea. Get some ventilation in here, get a little bit more cooling, maybe a fan in here deal with it a little bit better. Before we jump into the time-lapse, one little detail about the time-lapse. So, when I did the, the one-at-a-time printing, unfortunately Octolapse does not capture that very nicely. Which is a real shame, because, yeah, it, on layer height changes, it only triggers for one of the models, which I think is the first one that you drag into Cura. So, unfortunately, I had to adjust those settings a little bit. And luckily, Octolapse has a bunch of options, so I went for the change at layer height. That seems to have worked. Uh, quite happy with the results, but there's also one or two time lapses that failed horribly here, so you might actually see some weird stuff where there's bits of the time lapse just missing. And that's because Octolapse and the time-lapse tools didn't really deal well with the fact that I was doing something weird in terms of the printing modes. That said, let's roll. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, I know I did. I'm melting, so I'm gonna get myself a nice cold glass of wine or something and relax. Um, yeah, so like, subscribe, leave some comments, please. Just let me know what you think would be cool. I am still gonna revisit the one I said I couldn't make this week. Uh, not sure when, but I'll get there. Hope you enjoyed it, and remember to be awesome. See you next time.